situation. I'm not about to mess up no cars and I'm not about to take out a power line. That's just what I'm not gonna do. I actually had a pilot, I got a fuel up, gotta use the bathroom. But I'm on my first load, I got about 255 miles, that's what it says right there, 255 miles until um, my first drop. So I picked up at two places and I'm dropping off at two places. So I'm gonna fuel up and then I'll show you guys what I picked up. But we have a RAV4 and number one, a Tacoma. We have, hold on. We have a uh, Forerunner right here, black one. Another RAV4, a Corona, another RAV4, and um, another Forerunner and another Corolla. So these two Corollas is my first stop and my second stop is the rest of the load. But um, yeah. One thing I like to check is to make sure um, these things are always in because they like to pop out on me when I'm driving down the road. So make sure those are all good. All of these are in. At least check one shop on the car. Hands are good. But yeah, this is my load. Oh yeah. Looking pretty good. Yeah, it's me. Looking pretty good. What it do, y'all? What it do? You won't believe the day I'm having. I'm finally getting to my first customer. I gotta unload these two cars on this busy, busy road. And then on my way to get here, I thought I was crossing like a low line. So I stopped in the middle of the street and waited till the cops got there because it was a lot of traffic and I had to direct traffic until they got there. And then once the cops got there, I got my high stake. And I measured that line. It was 15 feet. So I was like, all right, cool. And people were mad, but guess what? I don't care. I don't care. You just gonna be mad. Cause guess what? I'm gonna be glad when my job is done. Correctly. <laughs> but we finna low. Thomas, 
tickets, so let's get into it. such a bad day like seriously what's up y'all so it's like the next night i'm home now in my pajamas but i just kind of want to explain like this whole thing so this is my first day at this company um hauling new cars i've been hauling cars for eight months with a uh, carvana those are used cars but now I'm holding new cars for Centurion. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you a little story or whatever and how that whole day was just traumatic. <laughs> okay, so I picked up a load in Jacksonville. I had to um, pick up two at two different stops. So six of my cars were from one Toyota and two of my cars were from my, another Toyota, yeah. <laughs> and, um, after I picked up those cars, I went down my way to Georgia. First stop was Union City. So with Union City is I did I did contact a driver to get directions, but it was it wasn't like I actually got the directions and I thought I was following the right directions, but I don't know. I, I could have been or I could have not been. With Centurion, they stressed you, you know, call dispatch. And they'll um, hook you up with another driver that's recently been there. So if you need help, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, so as I was going down this road, it said no trucks. Okay. And if you're a truck driver, you know, you see these no truck signs after you did not already turn on the road. Whether you're looking or not, that's just somehow these, that's just how some of these signs are most of the time. And um, I was like, okay, I can't turn around. It is what it is. So I'm driving and I see some little branches. So with little branches, you don't want to drive your truck under little branches because you will damage something. So it's one way this way and one way the other way. So I'm driving in oncoming traffic, but I waited for I waited for there to be no car. So I put on my hazards and started driving on the left side. And I'm driving, I'm driving, and here comes the power line. The power line looked low to me. So I was like, okay well i'm just gonna get out i'm gonna pump my brakes i'm gonna call the police because i don't know what to do in this situation i'm not about to mess up no cars and i'm not about to take out a power line that's just what i'm not gonna do so um i called police they dispatched a police officer it took him out 20 25 minutes to get there um obviously i have traffic coming from both ways and they obviously can't see around my truck so i had to get out and direct traffic like okay you come this way come on let's go do 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 all right cool police officer finally came and um, i told him the situation he was like okay well what what you know what you want to do da, da, da. so i think his original plan was he was just gonna let me creep onto it and see if i was gonna hit the line but i was like nah i got a height stick okay because you need your height sticks to measure how tall your loads are and my highest point on my load was about 13 8 so i just wanted to know like was that power line 13 6 because if it was i would hit it if you know so i was like okay boom we got traffic blocked i'm talking about buku traffic both ways so i get out get my high stick i measured that power line that power line is 15 feet now at this point i'm feeling like a Dumbo because it's like I just wasted 30 minutes. I just wasted 30 minutes. Um, probably more than that. 
trying to figure out if if I'm gonna hit this power line and the whole time I wasn't gonna hit it. But that's okay because guess what? I'd rather be safe than sorry. That was my judgment, okay? And like I said, the driver that I contacted told me to go down Buffington Road, but I just didn't, it just didn't click in my head. Like, okay, if he told me to go that way, then it, then it might, then it makes sense. Like, you know, I can, I can get through there, but it just, I just didn't trust it. I don't know. It's my first time on this route. First time on this, with this carrier. So I was just being extra, super duper cautious. So that's all that was so that was just part one that's part one of this crazy day okay let's see i get to my second my second um dealership door not dealership i was dropping off at enterprise and that was fine that was easy easy greasy well when i got there it was nobody there so i'm walking around the whole enterprise trying to find somebody that, it was nobody there so i'm walking back to my truck and i see the security guard walking back to the truck i'm like okay but that's just only the back so boom cool all right, so I'm on my way back to Commerce, Georgia, to my terminal, drop my truck off so I can go home. Well, I want to say about as soon as I pulled in to Commerce, it was a truck that was following me around the, like, a Jeep or whatever. It was a truck, a Jeep following me. I'm like, why is this dude following me? Like, I'm sitting here trying to find parking, and I see this truck, like, just tailgating me. I'm like, okay, let me stop and roll down my window. He was like, hey. Um, when you had went over the train tracks, your ramp fell out. And I'm gonna show y'all what the ramp looked like. That's that's the ramp you use that your car needs to drive on in order for you to load up a truck. I'm like, okay. Now mind y'all, it wasn't even a safety issue on my part as far as making sure I was latched completely back there. When I looked, okay, when I looked to my trailer, this is after he told me, the bolt that holds the the ramp in was completely gone. It, it was completely gone. So that's, that's not on my part because it's not just going to fall out. It, it's just not. It's a spring. It's not just going to fall out. I don't know. It's just, that's just, that just wasn't me. It, it just wasn't. So the whole ramp just, fell out and it's not even supposed to do that even if you um even let's say i even if i didn't latch it the ramp isn't just supposed to fall out because i've driven down a road a highway an interstate with my ramp dragging on the road it's not supposed to fall out like that so the ramp fell out and the bolt that keeps it together was gone so he said yeah it dropped off in the grass i'm like okay thank you so as he's driving off, I'm like, okay, well, I'll just tell maintenance, you know, that I need this and that. And I'm like, I can't tell maintenance. I got to go get my ramp because I need to unload my rental car so I can get home because my rental car is in my truck. I'm like, okay. So I get back in my truck. I drive back out there near the train tracks. I get out of my truck, put my flashes on to see if I can find the ramp. The ramp is nowhere to be found. So I'm walking back to my truck. And then the guy in the Jeep, I see him driving by. He's like, are you the lady that I was talking to earlier? I'm like, yeah. He was like, yeah, I got your ramp. It's on top of my truck. He had that ramp strapped on top of his Jeep. On top of his Jeep, y'all. Like, if, if I, let me tell you something. That ain't nothing but God. Because I was about to go find my ramp. And walk back to my truck and try to put that bad boy back in. That ain't nothing but God because that could have just been a regular Hyundai Sonata in the back, you know. And they can't, of course, you know, you can't really strap anything on top of your car. You don't have no straps or nothing. But this man, he had the utility rack. He had the straps. He had everything. And he strapped that thing on top of his truck and came back to give me my ramp. And the best part about it is the ramp didn't hit him when it came out because obviously he was behind me and it didn't hit him. But yeah, that's so that was that's a big blessing. I just want to thank God that nobody got hurt in that situation. But that's also a problem that was out of my control. Like I said, for you, um, before you even drive off in those in these type of trailers. You got to make sure it's locked. And I know a 100% fact I know it's locked. The only time my skits have ever fallen out is if it got loose 
okay? Even if it's loose, the latch will still be there. The little silver pulley thing will still be there. That thing was gone. That's that's not supposed to happen, period. Period. That's not my fault. So, um, yeah, I put that in as a maintenance request. And that's going to have to get fixed before I get my next load. So, I got to call maintenance tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, that's... um. That was that. Let's see. Did anything else crazy happen that day? Hmm. No. It was just really hectic. And I'm sharing this because in previous situations throughout my two years of trucking, if I would have, you know, earlier, if I would have gone through that, I would bust out crying because I've done it before. Um, if you're, if you're a, um, an old subscriber, you know what I'm saying? If you've seen that video when I had to drop up that load in Atlanta, yeah. Of course, I didn't cry on the video, but I cried about it. But, you know, it comes with experience. I'm doing good things. I'm learning not to stress about things. It is what it is. Things happen. As long as somebody gets hurt, we're good. Um, and like I said, I'd rather be safe than sorry in any of these situations. So that's a learning lesson for me. That's also another learning lesson for me to just plan my trips better. It is my first run, so I'm still trying to get adjusted to things. But just plan my trip better. Um, I did call the dealership, by the way, but I didn't ask for directions. I asked where to park my truck to unload, but I didn't ask for directions how to get there. But I did ask the driver, so he did help too. So yeah, but just better, just plan my trips better, call the dealerships, call drivers, and um, figure out the best route. Oh yeah, another thing. I was stuck in about an hour, hour and a half of traffic in Atlanta, 285, 85. I mean, like, come on. But it's all good. Guess what? It's all good, you know why? Because God is great all the time. All the time, God is good. Or great. <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> this is just like, I just wanted to share like my first love with you guys. It was so crazy, but it's an experience that I have on my belt and something that I can always look back on because I got this video. But um, if you guys wanna get into drugging, do it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's worth your while, I will tell you that. But that's all for today's video, guys. If you watched all the way to the end, all the way to the end, let me know how your day was. I would like to know. Let me know how your day was. And um, I'm about to edit this video, excuse the ratchetness. And uh, I'll catch you guys in my next one. Peace.